Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Perhaps you need a little Guatemala. That's the <laughs> best way to describe <laughs> me. So I take the liberty to share this with you. I will explain these amazing pictures. This is a part of who I am. So let's start, there's a brief description of how amazing Guatemala is, so I, this is for you to keep and take home, and probably start programming your next trip. <laughs> this is one of my favorite places, uh, Antigua, Guatemala, the first picture right there, the one with the orange house. Beautiful, it's amazing. You have some beautiful children. And then on the bottom left, you will see a volcano where people go hiking. Hiking is something very common. And I actually grew up looking at this volcano. So it was Ooh. a nice experience for me. <laughs> Santiago Atitlan, Panajachel. I make it a point to go every year because this place makes me happy. So I visit that place. And our famous Mayan pyramid, Tikal. It's located in Pete, and I strongly suggest for you to visit because it's nothing that I can describe. It's just amazing. And we also have castles in Castillo, San Felipe. Mm -hmm. So I took the liberty to share these amazing pictures with you because they're a part of who I am, and I grew up looking at these things almost every day. So let's uh, move on to share a little bit of who I am. People often know, know me as Judy Grijalva. What they do not know is that my full name is Judy Giselle Waleska Grijalva Farfan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> For me, my full name is extremely important. It represents who I am and my family. Which is interesting because Everywhere I travel, they require my full name, except here in the United States. So good thing I'm a dual citizen and I carry both IDs with me. <laughs> That's pretty cool. My parents worked really hard to come here to this country. They had dreams, hopes. We were a small family. My mom, Miriam. My dad, Romulo. My sister, Ruby. My older sister, and I. We were a small family. My parents were very focused. They were starting a new life in a new country. They wanted to provide us with the best education possible. And they were always working really hard. I still remember my last year here. I was in elementary school. I was in a Catholic school, St. Angela Marici. And second grade was my last year. It was, it was an amazing experience for me to have the opportunity to be born in New York. I was born there and go to Catholic school and learn the actual language. My parents took the decision to go back home to Guatemala. Believe me, my sister and I, we were excited, but we were also freaking out. <laughs> See, people often assume that Spanish is my native language, but both of them are. I grew up with an older sister who only spoke English, parents that only spoke Spanish, cousins that only spoke English, so it was like a mix, it was a diverse, and I was like, okay, I'm extremely confused. <laughs> I was throwing words in English, I was throwing words in Spanish. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> I, I actually thank my mom to, until this day that she gave me this opportunity to learn both languages because I succeeded because of it. I remember my first day in school in Guatemala City like it was yesterday <laughs> because I was traumatized. <laughs> I, told, I asked my mom, I said, Mama, what am I going to do? I'm not even fluent in Spanish. <sighs> Que voy a hacer? Que voy a hacer? <laughs> so she said, don't worry, you just need to ask a teacher, ¿Dónde está tercero primaria? Where is third grade? <laughs> <laughs> See, I was like, okay, I guess that it's going to be that easy. It, it was, it's a beautiful memory that I carried with me because you see, with my mom, with my parents, and my family, 
it was an interesting way of communication because I will speak to my mom in in English and my mom will answer in Spanish. So it was quite interesting. Things got it, started getting a little bit more interesting, a little bit easier. I started falling in love with my country, with my culture, with the language. And boom! Things started changing as soon as I finished junior high school. They asked me, Yuri, you have to take a decision. You have to choose your career. And I was like, I'm still in junior high school. I'm a little bit confused. So I went to a vocational school. I graduated in computer science, which was pretty cool. It helped out during college. At this point, I graduated, and it's time for my first job. I, I had this amazing opportunity to be hired for TELUS International. I was part of this company for eight years. They gave me my college scholarship, so I went to La Universidad Galileo. Estudié una licenciatura en tecnología y administración de empresa, which means that I went to uh, a university well known in Galileo and that I studied a bachelor in technology and business administration. It was a lot of fun. I traveled, I worked for Canada, for Texas, traveled back and forth in Guatemala. And at this point of my life, family expanded. My sister Ruby joined the military. My parents were very proud and they were very happy. My family expanded. I had a little sister Allison and a little brother George. My nieces, Liana and Amelia, the reason why I moved to the United States two years ago. And I'm happy to say that I now work for a company where I get to interact with many people around the world and I get to implement many business transactions and skills that I have learned with time. And I'm a proud member of the National Swimming Pool Foundation. My culture is my identity and personality. It gives me spiritual, emotional, intellectual uh, opportunities, and, and I'm proud of it. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Awesome. speak French and my brother-in-law didn't speak any German or English so my sister-in-law always had to communicate between us you had a little easier you could speak directly <laughs> it's fun it's fun it's really great to have a family like that thank you very much yeah our next uh, speaker is Trevor Deardorff and the evaluating Trevor will be Mary <coughs> could you please tell us about this Thanks, Mr. Toastmaster. Trevor is speaking from the Competent Communication Manual, and he has skipped to Project 10, which is Inspire Your Audience. His objectives today are to inspire the audience by appealing to noble motives and challenging the audience to achieve a higher level of beliefs or achievement. To appeal to audiences' needs and emotions using stories, anecdotes, and quotes to add drama. His time today is 8 to 10 minutes. Thank you, Karen. Uh, I've seen him here in the meetings, I've heard some of his speeches, I really